So we're on step C, uh, Fun in the Sun with the Southeastern Quilt and Textile Museum. We're going to do an outline stitch on the boat hull. So that is where we're at. Let me bring the uh, completed one back in the view here. So that's what this is. We're using that beautiful yellow green thread and it's just showing some um, detail on the hull of the boat itself. We'll actually use this stitch twice or three times, uh, two lines on the boat hull and then we'll also use it for the scallop as well. So way back there, I don't even remember what step, uh, I asked you to retain the waste paper from the die cut of the boat hull. We're going to actually, in order to match it up to the boat hull, you're going to use it on the side where it's not the yellow gridded side, it's the reverse side. What I want you to do, notice that I've torn mine. This is pretty tough paper, this parchment. Here's how I want you to tear it. I want you to take a needle from your pack, uh, a blunt one with no thread in it, or uh, not a blunt one, but I want you to use the, the side that has the eye in it with no sharp point right there. And I literally want you to, I'm going to just kind of fold this out of the way for a second, find something slightly cushy. I'm on uh, two layers of a placemat, and I want you to just drag the head of the needle right across, try to stay on the line, right across those. And you're taking the score mark and you're scoring it some more. The reason I want you to draw that line apart is I want you to be able to pull this apart without detaching it from the two sides. So it's just, you, you press it with your index thumb and just kind of pull it away. All right, so I've opened up those lines. And again, we're keeping this because it becomes a perfect tracing guide. So there you go. So in order to get those lines on your wool, we're gonna finally use the um, mechanical pencil. So get yourself some lead. Don't draw it out too far. The more you draw it out, the longer. It's probably maybe a sixteenth of an inch showing. The longer you draw it out, the easier it's going to break. But I want you just to hold it. I usually end, end up with min, index and middle finger kind of holding it. And I'm going to just kind of sneak in between the papers and just kind of go back and forth and just kind of gently coaxing it a little bit. Let me peek and see if we're seeing anything. And I am, you may not be able to, but this is where I've said to you as far as marking on any kind of textile where you're just showing yourself a line, don't mark it so dark that you can never get it out. You wanna mark it just enough that you can see it and that whatever stitches you're gonna use are gonna cover it right up. That looks good enough to me, so then I'm going to move down and I'm going to do the second one. Now this lower row has a little curly cue right here, and I forget which part of the, the boat hull it is. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to stick to the straight lines. If you want to draw that little curled segment in, you certainly can and stitch it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother with it. So again, just kind of drag it along there and hopefully you can see it and if it's not dark enough just kind of you know go over it a little bit if you think you need to but for the most part i think it's dark enough for me to see and again we don't want it so dark that it won't come out should you wash it um, these certainly can be washed i wouldn't bother with it too many times um, if you're going to use it as a mug rug, if something spills on it, toss it in with your towels. However you wash your towels, that's how you're going to wash this as a finished project. I wouldn't wash it before it was completely finished. Okay, so I've drawn my hull lines, and this is definitely a new stitch. It forms a little different than what any of the ones we've practiced so far. I am calling this an outline stitch. You may find it in a more contemporary or newer a stitch embroidery stitch book called a, a, a stem stitch honestly to me they are not the same uh, I just want a straight line a stem stitch kind of forms the stitches at a, at a diagonal over the line 
we're going to stitch straight along the line. So that's why I'm calling it an outline stitch. So I'm going to go with the old fashioned term as I used it. Come up from the back, right on your line, right dead center of your line as best you can. Now I usually end up, <coughs> excuse me, starting away from the blanket stitch. If you want to start all the way out here on the edge and stitch over the blanket stitch, you can. Come up. And this is one of the stitches, and it's not uncommon in embroidery, where the very first stitch you stitch is not like any of the other ones, and I think that often confuses people. But just remember, you're kind of trying to go with it, and I believe there's a pretty good uh, diagram in your direction sheet. Plus, you are also, if you bought the uh, Stitch and Notion kit, I, I think you also have um, the other guides that I put in there as well. Okay. So what I want you to do is come over about an eighth of an inch, probably not quite a quarter, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to come right back up. So in this first stitch, I've drawn a complete, complete circle. Came out here, fabrics around here, or my threads around here, and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to pull that up tight. Now, this is two layers. Before I go any farther, you've got the boat hull and you've got the backing. Since the entire boat hull, and again yours are finished, mine have some space to stitch just in case I need to go back and do something over or there's a question on one of our Zoom meetups, um, but yours is completely stitched, technically you just need to be biting into the red. You can go all the way through to the back, but it's pretty thick, it's, it's unnecessary. Just make sure you're getting a, you know, a good bite of red fi uh, fibers. Now remember that first stitch I went up and all the way back into where I started pretty much. The successive stitches, you're gonna come that same eighth of an inch away, but you're gonna go right back to that previous stitch. So you're not gonna go back to the beginning, you're gonna go back to where the last stitch left off, which is right here, where the last finished portion of the stitch left off. So in about an eighth of an inch away, back up right there. Again, I try not to stitch through the yellow green thread again, because if I need to take it out, it's, it's a bear to get out, all right? And you're basically building stitches that walk away like that. So again, an eighth of an inch away, back to the last portion of the finished stitch directly on my pencil line. And then I'm just gonna put that on repeat. Um, if you care, the stitches are gonna look a lot neater if you keep them small, meaning keep, you know, keep to that same 16th of an inch or so, eighth of an inch max. If your stitch get, stitches get larger, it's not gonna hurt anything, um, but they just are gonna line up and stay neater if you keep them pretty short from the next one to the next one. And then you're just gonna put that on repeat. You're gonna go all the way across the dark line, go to the back side and tie a knot. All right, I think you've got it. So you're just going uh, beyond it an eighth of an inch back to the last portion that was finished beyond it back beyond it back and you'll go all the way across and that adds your uh, st st outline accent I'm gonna come a little closer to the camera just in case hoping I'm in the field I'm gonna go in and back to where the last portion of the finished stitch was come out an eighth of an inch away back over to it and just put that on repeat until I've gone 